Welcome to the video for problems 4.4 and 4.14 in engineering 623. In problem 4.4, uh, we're told the following. A two-port network is driven at both ports such that the port voltages and currents have the following values. And we're also given that Z0 is equal to 50 ohms. Now, the, the four values given for V1, V2, I1, and I2 are shown here to the, uh, to the right. And the questions are, first, determine the input impedance seen at each port, and then find the incident and reflected voltages at each port. So the, uh, this is a very easy problem. Uh, the input impedance seen at port 1 is simply V1 over I1. And so that turns out to be 50 ohms when we do the calculation. The input impedance at port 2 is V2 over I2, which turns out to be 50, uh, 50 angle 90 degrees ohms. In other words... Uh, that's the same thing, of course, as J50 ohms. Now, to find the uh, incident and reflected voltages at each port, uh, we can proceed as follows. We know that at any port N, Vn is equal to Vn plus plus Vn minus, and In is equal to In plus minus In minus, where IN plus is VN plus over Z naught, and IN minus is VN minus over Z naught. So uh, if we multiply both sides of this second equation by Z naught, we get Z naught IN is equal to VN plus minus VN minus. So we have two equations here in VN plus and VN minus. And if we add those two equations, <coughs> we can get VN plus is equal to Vn plus Z0 In over 2. And on the other hand, if we subtract the second equation from the first, we can get Vn minus equals Vn minus Z0 In over 2. So these two equations tell us how to get the incident and reflected voltages at port N. And so we just uh, repeat those formulas for port 1 and port 2. And we get uh, these four answers for V1 plus, V1 minus, V2 plus, and V2 minus. So this uh, ends up being a very uh, straightforward, uh, simple problem. Uh, so that concludes our discussion of problem four. Now let's look at problem 14. Problem 14 says the following. A four-port network has the following matrix, excuse me, a four-port network has the scattering matrix shown as follows. And you see the scattering matrix there uh, listed as S right here at the beginning of the problem. And now we need to answer four questions. So A... Is the network lossless? Okay. Well, for this question, as we say here, in order for the network to be lossless, this matrix must be unitary. Now, among other things, what that will mean is that each column has a amplitude of 1 and each row has an amplitude of 1. That's not all that it means, but that's part of what unitary means. But that's enough right there to see immediately that this matrix is not unitary because if we look, for instance, an easy way to do this would be to look at the magnitude of this last row. And we see that uh, the magnitude of that last row would simply be the square root of 0.3 squared plus 0.5 squared, which is uh, 0 0.583, which of course is not equal to one. And therefore this matrix is not unitary and so therefore the network is not lossless.
and that's all we need to to do problem uh, B says <clears throat> is this network reciprocal well <clears throat> In order to be reciprocal, the in order for the network to be reciprocal, its scattering matrix must be symmetric. And if we look, uh, we see indeed uh, S12 is equal to S21, S13 is S31, and so on. Uh, if we compare all the other off-diagonal terms, uh, this matrix is indeed symmetric, and therefore the network is reciprocal. So the, the network is not lossless, but it is reciprocal. Now for question C, uh, it says, what is the return loss at port 1 when all other ports are terminated with matched loads? Now when it says that all other uh, ports are terminated at, with matched loads, that means that V2 plus equals V3 plus equals V4 plus equals 0. So in that case, V1 minus is only equal to S11 here times V1 plus. And therefore, the reflection coefficient, V1 minus over V1 plus, is simply equal to S11, or 0 0.178 at an angle of 90 degrees. Now, the return loss is equal to minus 20 times the log of gamma. And so, uh, excuse me minus 20 times the log of the magnitude of gamma and the magnitude of gamma here is clearly 0.178 so we have minus 20 log of 0.178 and we'll get 14.99 db for the return loss and that's it for problem c now for problem d it says what is the insertion loss and the phase delay between ports two and four when all other ports are terminated with matched loads Okay, so since all other ports are terminated with match loads, that means that V1 plus is equal to V3 plus is equal to zero. And therefore we're left with V2 minus is equal to S22 V2 plus plus S24 V4 plus, and likewise V4 minus is equal to S42 V2 plus plus S44 V4 plus. And the insertion loss, uh, just like the return loss, is minus 20 log of, the, of gamma. This is the insertion loss is minus 20 log of, you almost want to call it T because it's sort of like a transmission from one port to the other. So minus 20 log V4 minus over V2 plus, and that's when, when we take a, a V4 plus to be equal to zero. So if we take V4 plus to be equal to zero in this last equation, that last term will go away, and we see that V4 minus over V2 plus is simply S42. So we have then that the insertion loss is minus 20 log of S42, and if we look uh, above, uh, and, and excuse me, once again, it's minus 20 log of the magnitude of S42. And so... Um, and, and actually, there should be magnitude here. Let me actually go ahead and take a break for just a moment to correct that, and then I'll return. So now we uh, have the, uh, the magnitude bars included. So again, the insertion loss is minus 20 log of the magnitude of V4 minus over V2 plus when V4 plus is equal to zero. So that's minus, as we can see from this second equation, when we set V4 plus equal to zero, that turns out to be minus 20 log of the magnitude of S42, which is looking up here uh, at the matrix at S42. That's the second uh, element in the fourth row, which is 0.3, angle of minus 45 degrees. And so, uh, we have minus 20 log of 0.3 or 10.46 uh, dB for the insertion loss. And for the phase delay, the formula for that is minus, since it is a delay, minus the phase of V4 minus minus the phase of V2 plus. And um, since V4 minus in this case is just simply S42 times V2 plus, we can substitute that. And then the phase of this product is the sum of the phases. 
And so we'll get phase of S42 plus phase of V2 plus minus phase of V2 plus. And so we end up getting minus the phase of S42 or minus a negative 45 degrees or 45 degrees. So that's the amount of phase delay is 45 degrees. And now finally for uh, the final part, uh, part E of this problem, it says what is the reflection coefficient seen at port 1 if a short circuit is placed at the terminal plane of port 3 and all other ports are terminated with matched loads. This is the only part of this problem that is just uh, a little bit involved. So since we have a short circuit at port 3, uh, V3 plus will be minus V3 minus. We have matched loads at the other two ports, so V2 plus is zero and V4 plus is also zero. So let's see now what we can do with the fact that V3 plus is equal to minus V3 minus. Well, we know that since V2 plus is equal to zero and V4 plus is equal to zero, then V3 minus is simply equal to S31 V1 plus plus S33 V3 plus. But that's equal to S31 V1 plus minus S33 V3 minus since V3 plus is equal to minus V3 minus. Now, um, having uh, derived that, let's take this V3 minus term over to the other side of the equation, and we'll get 1 plus S33 times V3 minus is equal to S31 times V1 plus, and now divide both sides of the equation by 1 plus S33, and we finally get V3 minus is equal to S31 over 1 plus S33, times V1 plus. Now we're finally, we're almost there. Uh, we're ready to turn to the equation for V1 minus. Well, that will be equal to S11 V1 plus plus S13 V3 plus. Remember again, V2 plus and V2, excuse me, V2 plus and V4 plus are both zero. So that's why we have only these two terms. But um, this will be the same as S11 V1 plus minus S13 V3 minus, since of course V3 plus is minus V3 minus. Now we found up here V3 minus in terms of V1 plus, so let's go ahead and use that. We get V1 minus is S11 V1 plus minus S13 times V3 minus, but V3 minus, as we found up here, is S31 over 1 plus S33 times V1 plus. And now everything on the right hand side is in terms of V1 plus. We can gather it all together like this. And so we see that the, the desired reflection coefficient gamma is equal to S11 minus S13 times S31 over 1 plus S33. And if we look at the matrix, um, the scattering matrix for this problem and substitute for these values, S11 is 0 0.178 and angle 90 degrees. S13 is 0 0.4, angle 45 degrees, and of course, since this matrix is symmetric, S31 is the same as S13, so again, we have 0 0.4, angle 45 degrees, um, and, the, and the denominator, this 1 plus S33, just becomes 1 plus 0. In this scattering matrix, S33 is 0, so we have 1 plus 0 here. So, uh, gamma ends up being 0 0.178, angle of 90 degrees, minus 0 0.16, an angle of 90 degrees, or 0 0.018, angle 90 degrees, which of course is the same as J times 0 0.018. And that concludes problem 414. And so that's the end of this video.